This is the fourth generation Hyundai Santa Fe. If you missed generations two and three, that's probably because they were dull, like most Hyundais in those years. But during the last dozen months or so, the Korean car manufacturer started launching cars with design more radical than its funky sister brand Kia. Black paint aside, as it makes this car look like a dark blob in the picture, in real life Santa Fe has a bit of BMW X3 or Ford Edge about it. It's got 477cm in length, 189cm in width and 277cm wheelbase. Ground clearance is 18.5cm. Ground clearance and wheelbase are among the smallest in the segment, but length and width place Santa Fe in the middle of the pack, somewhere between Ford Edge and Skoda Kodiak or Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace. Hyundai Santa Fe is also very similar to recently refreshed Kia Sorento. No wonder, Hyundai Kia is one company, so they share a lot of parts, but at the moment Santa Fe is the more modern one. The boot opens automatically as you approach it with a key in your pocket so you can carry larger items, for, for example. Now, there are two problems with it. First of all, the warning beeps are not very discreet. And then there are cases when you want to approach the car from the back, but you don't want to open the boot lid, like, for example, when you need to open your garage door. Depending on whether you choose a five or seven seater, the boot volume is 625 or 547 liters. This is a seven-seater, so no extra storage under the boot floor, but there is sufficient space for the boot cover and some other stuff you may want to keep in a closed space. Whenever you open or close the boot cover, you're going to pull the seat belts out of their little harnesses. It would be enough just to twist these around. Similarly, anchor points obstruct the seats. If they were turned 90 degrees, they would not be a problem. In the boot, there are also buttons to fold the seats in the second row. With seats in third and second rows folded, you get 1625 liters of cargo space. And now let's try the third row of seats. On the curbside rear seat, there is a button to partially release the backrest and slide the whole seat forward. But even when it's all the way forward, which may require moving the front seat as well, access to the third row remains limited. Closing the seat and putting the backrest in the proper position is something a parent will likely have to do from the outside. Like in the Kia Sorento, also here there is not much headroom. These seats are definitely for kids and not even necessarily teenagers. On the plus side, there is still some place left behind the seats to fit backpacks or some shopping. In the second row, everything is fine. There is good legroom and headroom. There are USB ports, a 220 volt socket, there are AC vents, cup holders in the armrest and a place for bottles in the door bins. Side seats are heated and there are isofix points. There are also window blinds and doors cover the sills, so there's always less laundry for you. It's comfortable and elegant in the front. There are cup holders, USB ports, induction charger, storage, there is a new infotainment display, but graphics and interface haven't changed much compared to Sorento. There is also Android Auto, and now the speedometer is fully digital. This was necessary to allow for advanced trip computer and driver aids. Hyundai left a couple of analog gauges on the sides. What driver aids do you get? Hyundai Santa Fe has active cruise control, active lane keeping assist, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, driver fatigue monitoring. Some of these aids give audible warning sounds, so I suspect owners will try turning them off. Some car makers implement these systems better than others. In my opinion, warnings should first be visual, then haptic and finally audible. This lets the driver react without, for example, waking up the baby. Perhaps in case of Hyundai Santa Fe, it's not that big of a deal because this SUV is hardly sporty, but Hyundai and Kia also have some faster models and they make just as much racket. 
There is also the same auto hold which engages parking brake automatically as the car stops and here too you have to activate it every time you start the car. At 1850 kilograms, Hyundai Santa Fe is about average in the segment. This test car is powered by a 2 liter 185 horsepower 400 Nm diesel. This engine is mated with an 8 speed automatic and has all wheel drive. This engine and drivetrain combination may not be available everywhere. A 150 horsepower front wheel drive manual is also available, and so is a 2.2 liter front wheel drive or all wheel drive automatic with 440 newton meters and 200 horsepower. As I said earlier, Santa Fe is not a sporty car. Driving it carefully, I managed to get about 7 liters per 100 kilometers extra urban, but in the city I was quickly back up around 9. That's around 33 and 26 mpg respectively. I suggest you keep the car in smart mode rather than just an eco, because you sometimes need everything it's got to merge. Steering is lifeless, sound insulation average, suspension soaks up light imperfections, but I suggest you slow down before a pothole. This car doesn't glide over bumps, it definitely rides over them, and then everyone inside is well shaken. Assuming that for whatever reason you may want to take Santa Fe off the beaten track, it is possible, but I wouldn't go too deep into the wild. I got the Sorrento stuck here, so this time I took wider turns and got out safely. Hyundai Santa Fe prices start at 35,000 euro, a fully loaded automatic all-wheel drive diesel will set you back around 54,000. As long as the third row of seats is not important to you, this kind of money could buy you a low-spec premium SUV like a BMW X3 or Jaguar F-Pace or Volvo XC60. But if the third row of seats is important to you, then Santa Fe is much better than a 7-seater Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace, which happens to be the better Tiguan in 5-seater spec. Anyway, are you looking for a 7-seater? Is it an SUV or rather a van that's on your radar? Let me know in the comment section below if you like this video and if you like watching car reviews by a guy who complains about everything, then definitely subscribe because there's plenty more of where that came from. New episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.